Today we'll be exploring Greenpoint, Brooklyn, one of New York's trendiest neighborhoods. And sure, we'll show you where to go and what to eat, but we'll also tell you where the neighborhood came from with somebody who was born and raised here. Yeah, right here, uh, 22 years ago, was a different, different world at nighttime because, you know, we got held up and robbed. You don't know where Greenpoint is. We're on the northernmost tip of Brooklyn, right across from Queens. You know how you get customers? You put your donuts at the window. That's like the <laughs> best policy ever, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. It's like a eye candy right here where people, oh, now I gotta get the donut. Now this is a Greenpoint institution, right? Right, absolutely, John. It's been here for such a long time. If you don't come here on time, the Saturday or Sunday by noon, all the good stuff is gone or even there's a line out this door. This looks like the kind of place that has not changed in the over 60 years it's been open. I love these old school Donut shops. This was the original phone booth back in the day. I like how they kept the photo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a phone booth for like a 2022. My Marvel fans out there, this place might look familiar. It was used in Spider-Man No Way Home. And I want to spoil it a little bit for you because it was actually filmed in Atlanta. They just recreated the set to look like this. My father's been baking donuts since 1970 when he came here from Greece. There's tons of donut shops in New York. What makes you guys distinctive? We stay the same in a world that keeps on changing. And on top of that, I think what sets us apart is we really have a family feel here. Uh, when people come in, they feel included. We have regular customers who've been coming in since I was a kid. Our donuts are $1.50, which I don't think is very common now for anything, for one of anything to be $1.50. Classic glaze, we have a blueberry buttermilk, and we have a chocolate cake. So these two are like classic donuts that you would have had back in the day. This is sort of like a newer style. John, I've been coming here, oh my gosh, since I was probably like three, four as a kid. I could imagine <laughs> a little kid liking yeah, this place, actually. And I loved it. I kept coming back. <laughs> Mm. Mm. You got me saying that too. <laughs> I got the, the chocolate cake donut and these guys are consistently rated the top donut shop in New York City. And I can see why. I can imagine growing up in Greenpoint bringing boxes of Peter Pan to every single party. Oh, everything, John, everything. Weddings, parties, even, I mean, sometimes I heard stories of funerals too. And it was always a good time when they, when they say, oh, where'd you get it from? Peter Pan's, okay, now you can come in. This may be the best donut I've ever had in New York City. Mm-hmm. Making a bold statement here. Maybe my favorite. Mm. That's the way to do it, right? Mm, Dunk it on the coffee. Oh. Amazing. <laughs> Words can't describe. So, John, this right here, this red awning, back in the day, it was a different name. It's still a barber shop. My barber, he was a Russian barber, and it's in the famous movie Donnie Brasco, which came out in 97 with Al Pacino, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp is outside waiting in his Cadillac. Al Pacino comes in, talks to the guy, and my barber is actually in the movie oh, playing a barber. You tell many New Yorkers about Greenpoint, and the first thing that may come to their mind is the Polish community, because at one point, Greenpoint was second behind Chicago for the amount of Polish people living there. There was a lot of Polish people living in this neighborhood. They had families, they had kids. I, mostly all my friends were Polish, um, but you know, things changed and a lot of people moved out, they sold, and whatever, whoever is left here that's Polish is either, you know, they're either on rent stabilized or they own their own homes or they just didn't decide to sell and leave. So that, that area really did drop that percentage. But when you're talking about 20, 30 years ago, this was mostly a major, major Polish neighborhood in the area. I love these pillows. I'm buying them. <laughs> and it says a pierogi. <laughs> Hi, my name is Alexandra Kucharski. I'm the co-owner of Pierre Shark. This is Max Kucharski. <laughs> my husband's dream was to always open a pierogi spot in New York, but specifically in, in a Polish neighborhood. So what better neighborhood to do that than in Greenpoint? Not only are we, you know, a pierogi joint basically, but our pierogi are handmade fresh daily. So that's definitely the difference. And our dough, it's it's very thin, it's not as heavy. We are the best at making our pierogies handmade every day. That was the <laughs> Bunch of celebrities, by the way, have come out of Greenpoint. One of them is a very famous singer, birth name Patricia Andrzejewski, half Polish, better known as Pat Benatar. These guys have a Michelin bib. They've been open since 2019. One of the newcomers to the Polish food scene here. It melts in your mouth. So good. This really is one of the best pierogies I've ever had in New York City. It tastes amazing. <laughs> it gets better every bite. Mm. Mm. Brought us some shots. Cheers, man. Cheers. <laughs> it goes down hard. <laughs> 
goes down like Makes fire. Makes the nostrils sting. Oh. <laughs> I like the duck. Chris, you've talked to me so much about how Greenpoint is changing almost every single day. And then there's local businesses like this. You know, glass front, eye candy, see what they got. I don't have to go on my phone, scroll patrol, see what, you know, I could just see what they got and just go in. My parents started the business in 1975, but I guess we're one of the last remaining businesses in the community. A lot of these colors for car, there's like construction workers, they'll come and they'll, you know, they'll specifically look for I guess like OSHA colors like which stand out for safety obviously so they carry a lot of those too. I can't tell you why it's popular but this this is like a really heavy-duty workwear item. Um, guys who are working on their knees or doing whatever they have this extra piece of canvas here to protect it but I guess people are wearing it as to the clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Fashion's funny, huh? Exactly. <laughs> Today, Greenpoint, known as a super safe area, but back when you were growing up, wasn't really the case, right? No, it wasn't, John. That's that's the thing. Right here in this corner, I'd say about 22 years ago, I think it was between 9 and 10 o'clock at night, me and two friends of mine at the time, we were coming back from the YMCA, just finished playing basketball, had a great time, had the basketball, and right here, as we were heading back, we actually got held up. Went to my house, he called his dad, his dad's like, don't worry about it, we're gonna take care of it. Boom, within minutes he came with his brother, they had baseball bats in the in their, in their truck, they started looking around, the cops were helping us, we were helping the cops, and it was just straight up from a movie. I mean, I, I don't know whether to be amused or we're still in shock at the time, but you know, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, yeah. you know, it's just, we were just glad that they actually caught the, uh, the person. You're gonna see flyers like this all the time in Greenpoint, filming TV shows, Blue Bloods, Law and Order, you name it, you're gonna see it on every block. They took over. We got 1950s cars parked all along the street here. Amazing. This is one of the most filmed parts of New York City for television and movies. And you said that the TV show Girls was one of the reasons this neighborhood got so popular with new New Yorkers, with a hipster element. So after Girls was filmed, I believe that was like in like early 2010, um, a lot of people wanted to move here and it was like a big big like film prop people wanted to you know Oh, let's talk about Greenpoint Greenpoint was trending. Let's let's talk about the show They even have the coffee shop grumpies. Yeah, and you know, so it, it kind of like put it on the map During and after that show because there was even people that want to live where they filmed where she was from Which was on India Street the yeah. same building, you know So it's just like I feel like after that show like Greenpoint definitely was put on the map and blew up after that show Because now a lot of other shows and TVs want to film here and like I showed you before they constantly every week there's different shows, different things being filmed. You know, I'm lucky enough that my family, we own our house and we've been here, you know, for many years. But then at the same time, I feel for these other people that are moving here and they're, you know, they're trying to start their life. They're trying to survive. And these rents are just like, you know, they're skyrocketing. We just passed Greenpoint Avenue. Now you told me as a kid, your mom wouldn't let you come here, right? That's right, John. So back in the day, I was uh, kind of sheltered, if you want to say. My mom always said, don't go past Greenpoint Avenue. Um, you know, at that point, there was a, there was a lot of gangs known over here. There was a lot of prostitution known over here. It was uh, it was it was kind of like the Wild West, if you want to say. You got like these expensive delis across the street today. Yeah. Avocado for five dollars. Everything is a lot of things have changed. A lot of things have changed. A lot of things have changed. This is probably one of the most interesting Starbucks in New York City. Back back in the day of Greenpoint, this was a movie theater. And my wife's grandparents on their first date actually came here to see West Side Story, which is pretty, pretty cool. So this is West Street, John. This was a very thriving area back in the day when there was a lot of dock workers, ship workers, and all that. So now Manhattan Avenue, they're slowly bringing that over here because they're opening more restaurants, they're opening up more stores. A lot of people are moving here. And give it a few years, this will be the next new Manhattan Avenue. The original Eberhard Farber Pencil Factory building, which used to make the most pencils in the world and invented the colored pencil. Yeah, I think Pencil Factory is really just kind of like your friendly neighborhood bar. It's where all the people who live in the neighborhood come and hang out when they get off work. It's where all the people who work at all the restaurants, all the kind of restaurant industry people come to get a drink after their shifts at all the restaurants around here. Do you feel like Greenpoint's turned into one of the most popular nightlife spots in the city now? I think Greenpoint is having its day right now. It's definitely 
growing very fast. This is a really cool picture of uh, our block from the 1800s. And the bar actually used to be a long shoreman social club called the Miltonian Social Club. Yeah, we say Greenpoint is where people move if they decided to have a dog, and Park Slope is where you move if you decide to have a kid. <laughs> It is really crazy how in the last couple of years, Greenpoint is like one of the premier neighbors, not just to move, but for nightlife as well. That's right. That's right, John. Now a lot of people back in, they used to go into Manhattan. Hey, I'm going to, you know, one of the villages now. You could just go in your backyard. You pick a bar, whichever one you want to go to. Stay hydrated. <laughs> Cheers. Stay hydrated. We're not really staying hydrated. I know, yeah. <laughs> it's the opposite, but. I was just joking with you that I don't even feel cool enough to hang out in this neighborhood right now. That feeling of like once it was like a community feeling where people knew your name. It was kind of like Cheers where everyone knew your name kind of yeah. thing. But now it's just like, you know, there's so many new faces, so yeah. many people moving in that. I feel you, know. you. A lot of new things. I mean, look at this old industrial buildings, like the old working class part of Greenpoint and now they're turning it into a wine I bar. Got, how do you feel about that? Mixed feelings? I have mixed feelings. Yeah, I mean, I know it's good for the area also at the same time, but there's a lot of people getting moved out, kicked out, priced out. All right, this is Transmitter Park and a lot of people give Long Island City all the props for having the waterfront and the views, not knowing that Greenpoint has amazing views of Manhattan too. Yeah, that's right, John. I mean, right here, you got Transmitter Park. This was the old school uh, AM radio station. They, I guess, used to transmit, you know, to the ships and boats out there. And you got a beautiful view. You got a beautiful view. You got Midtown right across. This was India Street Piers. All these piers, you know, all these blocks had uh, piers that that reached out to where we are today. And you know, I have tapes of my uncles, you know, just driving on these piers with their cars. And people are fishing. People are hanging out. You know, and it was just like a different, uh, different time, different world, just to see that. You didn't have these luxury high rises. No, not at all. They were all factories. They were all warehouses. And you know, it was just, it's just amazing. To, to see that today here, you know, where once like people, you know, you had piers where cars were driving over, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> we have all this new construction right here on West Street. You know, you could be adding up to like 10,000 more people to the neighborhood. Affordable housing, they'll call it, but their affordable housing is not but my idea of affordable housing <laughs> it's is not so that affordable it's not that affordable for people not from New York. So, you know, but it's still you know, definitely these buildings are not going to be cheap. Bodega right behind me, I saw was on a couple blogs the other day. They're a speakeasy bookstore. Never knew about it until you mentioned it, so I guess let's find out. Let's, we're gonna check this out. Yeah, we're gonna investigate. One way to find out. Let's go. You ever seen a bodega with like old books? No, I feel like I'm in a library slash 99 cent store. Wow. 1949. He was telling me that the owner runs a comic book store down the street, and this is like an extension of some antique books. I'm curious, which one? Yeah. I, I mean, didn't even know about that. They gave this to U.S. troops uh, mm. during the Vietnam War. Interesting. This is Provost right here. When you were a kid, it was a lot different. Yeah, John, it was. So Provost Street right here, I still have memories like it was yesterday where my uncle would put me in his lab. He would come, you know, put me behind the wheel of a Chevy celebrity. And I was like maybe like three, four, maybe five at the time, you know, show me how to drive like just to steer while he was driving. But one thing that caught my attention and my eye even as a kid was there was a lot of women standing almost on every uh, corner, every block. And even as a kid, that kind of stuck out to me because I said, this kind of feels strange and weird, but- Chris, there's a bit of an irony here because we're on the Newtown Creek Nature Walk. And this is one of the most polluted sites in the United States, Newtown Creek. All the industrial waste there, it's a super fun site. You said that when you first discovered this, you thought it was a joke. We did, John. We did. Me and my friends, we thought it was a joke. It was definitely something like new to the area that we, we just couldn't believe our eyes. We had to see it to believe it kind of thing. Sun Mobile had a huge oil spill down here and still to this day, they're cleaning it up. Now that is a view I can get behind right there. Nice to come here and gather your thoughts nice and quiet away from the crowd of not too many people. No, uh, no cars, no traffic. If you liked Greenpoint, we did a great guide to Williamsburg, which is located right below Greenpoint. You could combine these two in one day. Check out this video for a good idea.